what are some really good books that you can use to learn mathematics if you are in high school? I wanted to make this video because I received an email from someone basically asking what books they can use to help their kids learn high school mathematics. And there was something in the email that was extremely interesting and it reminded me of something that I had forgotten about. So I'm going to read the email in its entirety and then we're going to talk about that. And then I'm going to show you some books that you can use to learn high school mathematics. Now, if you're in college, you can also use these books to learn math in college. In fact, they're all college level textbooks, but they're excellent and they're textbooks. They're not workbooks. They're actual books that you can use and open. So you can use the books to actually learn mathematics and teach mathematics from the books. They're not just like workbooks that have, you know, practice problems. They have all the theory. They're meant to be read. They're meant to be worked through and they're meant to be, I don't know, I want to say worshipped, but I, I collect math books, so I am a big, big fan. Okay, let me go ahead and open up the email here. The person's name is Roger. I'll leave their last name out of it. And the subject is high school maths. What are your book recommendations for high school maths? I am looking to refresh myself in order to help my kids. I have two more yet to go through high school. When I ask the kids for their math book, they do not have one, which is frustrating because I want to read the chapter and help them. Yeah, so that's the part I wanted to just address because I completely forgot about this, that at least in the US, I'm pretty sure if you're in school, you're not usually allowed to like take your math book home because the books are shared. And I think that when I was a kid, I'm trying to remember, but I think I was able to bring my books home, but they have it now to where, you know, the books are for the students. And because there's so many students in a high school, I guess it's not really practical to give each student their own book. So it's kind of like they have the books in the classroom and they can't bring them home. I think when I was in school, I was able to bring it home, but I had to bring it back. I guess each school is different. In any case, if you know anything about this, about whether high school students can bring their books home or not, leave a comment because I'm really, really curious. Okay, so now to address Roger's question as far as math books. So I wanted to come up with a list of books that was fairly comprehensive. In other words, if you can learn all of the math in these books, I mean, you're, you're ready for college. You're gonna, you're gonna ace your college classes. So I wanna start with basic mathematics. So Intermediate Algebra, this is a book by Blitzer, and I will leave links in the description of this video to every single book I talk about in this video. When you click those links, um, it helps me. And also, uh, you can look for used copies. It doesn't matter what edition you get. So all of these books have answers to all of the odd-numbered exercises and grid explanations. This one is on intermediate algebra, so it's got very basic algebra. So like if your student is like in algebra one or algebra two in high school, this is gonna be perfect. It's a great book. He also has a college algebra book, but I recommended this one because it's thicker. It's much thicker. It has more detailed explanations and it's a little bit more gentle, Roger. So like if you're trying to refresh your, your knowledge, this might help you more, okay? It might help you more. And again, it might cost, you know, a decent amount of money, but it's worth it. It's worth it. You know, if, you, if you're shopping and, and you look on like Amazon and you see those workbooks, which are great. I own a ton of workbooks that I've bought on Amazon. They're very different, right? This is a textbook. So it's going to have detailed explanations that you can use Roger to learn and that your kids can use to learn. It'd be really cool if you can get them to read the book. That would be, that would be amazing. Ah, oh, it's a great book. Fantastic book. Again, this one is Intermediate Algebra by Blitzer. I used his other book, uh, College Algebra, to teach courses for, for several years. Great books, great books. The next one I want to recommend is a Step Up. This is one that you could use for pre-calculus and trigonometry in college or in high school. This is the one by Sullivan. And again, it has answers to all of the odd numbered exercises, and it has great explanations. Very fantastic book, obviously a lot harder than the Blitzer book, so it'll take you more time to work through it. But when your kids do get to that level, at least they're going to have something. And honestly, let's just say that, you know, you're well-intentioned and you, you want to sit down and you want to help your kids learn some math, but you don't, you don't do it as much as you want to, right? Because you probably have other responsibilities. You probably have a job, et cetera. The fact that 
the books are in your home and your kids have access to those books means that maybe, maybe someday they'll pick them up on their own, <laughs> right? And start learning some mathematics. I mean, how great is that? Every time I get an email from someone who is in high school and they're like, they're doing self-study, I, I just get, I just get blown away by that. It's, it's just so cool. It's just so good. So worth owning these books. You can have them for the rest of your life. They're books that your kids can fall back on. It's really important, I think, to have a physical book. I know we live in a world of eBooks and AI and the internet, but there's something about physical books that makes such a difference. Even the fact that when you're working through a physical book and you're doing math on paper, you, you can just look down and do the math. Whereas if you're looking at an ebook, you have to keep looking up at the screen and then down at your paper, right? So it's a little bit harder, unless you have your ebook on like a tablet or something. But even then, there's something about a physical book. You, know, you, you can't smell an ebook. I mean, I guess you can, but you can smell the computer, but nothing. This is great. You know, the paper produces some type of odor and smell that's just intoxicating. Next up is calculus. So this is probably the most popular calculus book in the United States of America, and it was written by a Canadian mathematician. His name was James Stewart. He passed away. He was a millionaire who had a house in the shape of an integral, and this is the one and the only Stewart calculus. And again, I'll leave a link in the description. Any edition is fine. This book is heavy. Uh, I used another version of this book when I took calculus in college, and I thought it was okay. I, you know, I struggled with it just like any other math book, but it's pretty good and it's the one I would recommend in terms of popularity and you know how good it is. I, I would say if you're going to get one, maybe get this one. It's a good choice and your kids can jump into it. The only prereq for using this book is trigonometry. But I wanted to show you one more thing. I specifically picked it for you because I thought that since your kids are in high school, there's even an easier book they can use. In fact, they can use this next book to learn calculus even if they don't know trig. So if they just know some basic algebra, they can actually start learning calculus. And I think that that's gonna excite them. That excites people. You know, if you tell someone, oh, you know, you have to learn algebra and pre-calc and trig before you jump into calculus, it's like, okay. But if you say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna show you a secret way to learn calculus and you don't need any trig. Well, let me show you right now. It's this book here. And again, I'll leave a link in the description. It's called Brief Applied Calculus. This book requires zero trig. So you can jump ahead and actually learn some calculus using this book. I love this book. This is probably the easiest calculus book I own. I use this book to teach uh, courses in college in the past. And honestly, it was probably one of my favorite courses to teach because you're teaching students who don't know any trig. They, they just got out of algebra and then you're teaching them limits. It's like, welcome to you know, I don't want to say, but real mathematics, right? You get to, you get to see some really cool stuff. You skip all the pre-calc, you skip all the trig, and you jump into the calculus. You know, it used to actually be called that. It used to be called the calculus. Like the old calculus books were called the calculus because it was like a new thing. Like, oh, we're going to study the calculus. In any case, this one's called Brief Applied Calculus. It's by Beersford and Rocket, and it's a great book. It's a fantastic book. Again, I'll leave a link. In the description it's laid out perfectly super easy problems it's got some harder ones oh and it actually covers material that's taught in calc 1 calc 2 and calc 3 in college so they're going to get a heads up they're going to get some you know knowledge before they go to college before they take calculus so definitely recommend this one it's a fun book but if they're not in calculus you know they probably want to focus on their current classes which are probably algebra or things like that so uh, I definitely recommend it, and I will leave links in the description below. So, yeah. Uh, as far as geometry, I do have a geometry book. Uh, it's actually over there. I'm going to go get it. I'll be right back, and I'll show you the book. I'm back. I know I promised no workbooks, but this one is really good, and it's really affordable, and it's a geometry one that I like. I have some geometry textbooks, but I think this might be a little bit easier. It's everything you need to ace geometry in one big fat notebook, the complete high school study guide. So you can use this. Uh, to learn geometry. It's super easy to read, Roger. I think you're going to think like it's great because you're going to feel really smart. Um, it's not hard at all. This is so much easier than all the other books I've shown you. And it'll have some geometry that can help uh, your kids. So hopefully if anyone is watching this video and they're in high school, it's helped them. If you're in college, you can use all these books for college. In fact, all these textbooks are college level textbooks, which have the same mathematics that's used in high school. 
So yeah, those are my recommendations for high school math books. Another way to learn math, obviously, is taking courses. I do have courses. They're on my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. They're actually on the Udemy platform, which is a reputable place to have courses. But if you get my courses, please use my links for two reasons. One, it helps me greatly. Two, I've lowered the price of all my courses to the bare minimum. So if you use my links, I'm pretty sure you're going to get a low price on the courses, regardless of what Udemy is doing with sales. I'm pretty sure the links uh, give you give you a low price. So yeah, check those out. And if you take away anything from this video, it should be that mathematics is mathematics, right? So all of these books are college level books, but you can use them to learn high school math. And if you're learning math in high school, I think that's awesome. Oh, and if you found any value in this content, subscribe if you want to. If not, that's okay too. Until next time, keep doing mathematics.